We love nature here at Sunday Morning, so much so that every week we leave you in a place of natural beauty. It is something that helps us to cope. It's just calming that right. we, you know, we think about nature and, and sort of our roots. Tova Martin loves nature too, but what she really loves is nature in miniature. This is your opportunity to be a landscape designer, and I think that's one of the one of the main beauties of terrariums. So let's just Martin this is a missionary for the Lilliputian world of terrariums. She writes about them, creates them, and she gives workshops to convert others to their minuscule beauty. This one was held at the terrain at Steyer's Garden Center in Pennsylvania. What is a terrarium? It is a closed environment where the condensation dribbles down and the plant is self-watering. that's good. Tova insists that anyone with or without a green thumb can create a beautiful terrarium. You can do it with the mason jars you find in your attic. You can do it with that old fish bowl stuffed in your basement. You can probably look around your house and find something that works as a terrarium. So pretty. What made you attracted to come take this class? How did you hear about it? Um, I just heard about it from a friend. It just sounded fun, kind of a creative way to get some nature into the house. <laughs> do you feel like anybody could do this? Pretty much, yeah. And this is your first one? Yeah. Wow, I need to have a look from up here, because that is amazing. Are you proud? Yes, I'm very proud. I was pretty proud, too. So nice. I really love it. Terrariums came to life in 1830, when Nathaniel Ward, a British surgeon and naturalist, accidentally discovered that a plant would stay alive indefinitely and with almost no care when put in an enclosed glass case. There was a boomlet of terrarium making in the 60s and 70s, mostly as science projects for grade school kids. Today, grown-ups and kids alike seem enthralled. Sales of terrarium supplies here at Steyer's have increased 25 to 30 percent a year over the last couple of years. There really are no rules, and whatever your inner gardener is asking you for design-wise, right. that's what works for you, that's what you should do. Paula Hayes' inner gardener is asking for this. Open. An original hand-blown container for each terrarium. No mason jars, please. My whole creative process is always looking for ways to honor the planting and to emotionally connect the, the, the viewer or caretaker to the life of the, the artwork. So the hand-blown glass contributes to that. This is all little creeping fig. Hayes is the high priestess of terrariums, and her creations of living art, as she calls them, sell for between $4,000 and $60,000. Where do you want me to focus the blob? Is it okay to put it, if, what if it goes towards the lip? What if it goes towards the back? Like I, I prefer it back here. The blob in question, a seemingly impossible glass blowing technique, creates a unique effect. How does now it what's look? really, Ooh. really beautiful about this particular piece of glass is that it has this um, magnification. So you can like really see way down oh, deep inside. So pretty in there. You could say for Apollo Hayes terrarium, the maintenance is magnified as well. Hayes will tend to the plants for as long as three years before putting them in a container. And when each terrarium is complete, she will tend to it for at least a couple more years before she allows an owner to claim it. Is it hard to let them go? It is. You, you know, you can say it is. But she does let them go to private collectors as well as galleries and art fairs around the world. So I think we can easily lower it like three inches. In November, Hayes, in partnership with her husband, Teo Camparreal, installed these two huge terrariums in the lobby of New York's Museum of Modern Art, on display through the end of February. One is 15 feet wide, 
The other weighs 130 pounds. There are a few aspects of the architecture of the, of the pieces themselves that lend themselves to either something that is crawling and growing this way or is more vertical. And how about these out-of-the-box terrariums? An architect-designed cactus chair that can be yours for $3,000. Or these Icelandic Fernabloom pieces about to go into production. So here's to terrariums. It's like I can take this home and I can take care of this and it's not going to go away. The perfect way to bring the outside in.